Good morning um, to our viewers. I'm Hano Nisha Hendricks. I'm the National Legal Manager working in Civil Legal Aid Services at Legal Aid South Africa. And I'm pleased to be speaking to you for our second um, session this week um, on Facebook Live. Uh, we are broadcasting and speaking to people about our human rights this month because it's March. March is Human Rights Month in South Africa. And we are using this time to educate you about your rights. So we, we are going back to our first session we had on Monday um, be, because we had a very interesting question about the right to life and we were unpacking that question. The question was submitted uh, by Katlejo Sebe and it, 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 it asked about assisted suicide and euthanasia and we will speak a little bit about that and then we'll also speak about the right to equality that is in our Bill of Rights. You can uh, leave comments or any questions about human rights that you have on the page and we will look at the questions, we will come, uh, come back to you, answer you on those questions in, in upcoming sessions. Um, the questions can relate to anything about your human rights um, and as mentioned we will then be addressing it in future videos. If you require any legal advice, you can also call our toll-free number. You will see it behind me. It's 0800-110-110. Um, it is between um, 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. weekdays. If you cannot call, and you can you can send a please call me. And the please call me number is 079-835-7179. And we will call you back. So like and share this video so that we can spread the word about human rights. So let's start today's discussion. And as I've mentioned, we'll start with a question from Katlejo about the right to life and assisted suicide. So Katlejo's question was, um, will South Africa ever introduce euthanasia or assisted suicide? Um, and I thought we, uh, we can start by explaining what that means for people that, that maybe don't understand the concept. So a euthanasia or assisted, su assisted suicide is when somebody assists an, a patient um, to end their life. So this could take the form of giving them a medication that they will know will end the life of the person. Um, for example, a medical doctors that will give a certain level of morphine because when, when a person is at the, the end of their life and there's nothing more that they can do but um, uh, assist with the pain, and then they can give a certain level of morphine to end the person's life. Um, and, and that is also assisted. So assisted suicide, it means that the the patient themselves decides that I do not want to live anymore with, with uh, the circumstances I'm in, the pain I'm in, the medical condition I'm in, and they therefore do not assist me with any other treatments to, to, to stay alive and rather let me die or give me something to die. So in South Africa, just to clarify that, this is not legal yet. So if somebody does that, if you do give somebody um, medication to uh, help them pass on, um, if you participate in an assisted suicide, you can be charged criminally. So please be clear that this is not legal yet in South Africa. There's been lots of discussions about this. In last year, Dignity South Africa introduced a bill that is meant to talk um, and regulate this uh, euthanasia or assisted suicide. In, in fact, it also goes a little wider. It, it wants to regulate something that is called a living will. So in a living will, what you do is, as a person, when you are still composed mentors, um, compos mean when you can still make decisions rationally about your life and your health, that you uh, prepare a document where you indicate what you would want to have happen, meaning, please switch off a machine if I'm at this stage of my life, please give me, do not give me this kind of medicine if I'm on this stage of, of, of the, the treatment, et cetera, et cetera. So this is still a bill. It is not an act yet. This was introduced last year. And, and, and what that means is it's in parliament. And, and a bill is something where it starts a discussion in parliament of whether this is something that should be introduced in our law. And, 
what what you see is this very this very varying opinions about this that could relate to culture, religion, um, etc. But the the this, the point of introducing the bill is to start the discussion, which for Dignity South Africa they indicate that was a a positive, so that you at least have something to work towards, and if needs be, have it before. Um, the, the the decision making bodies in parliament to to decide on the parameters of euthanasia and assisted suicide so this bill would want to uh, regulate how the circumstances in which this can happen who can do this because this will also apply to medical professionals just to make it clear a medical professional meaning a doctor is also not allowed to uh, participate in an assisted suicide so it's not that a medical doctor can decide to give you medication to let you pass. The decision currently they have to make is provide the medication to alleviate as much pain as possible if there's nothing that they can do anymore. So there, there is in our law the, the, the right to refuse treatment. But medical professionals and, and the health department has indicated that it is, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to manage and medical doctors tend to 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 err uh, on the side of alleviating the pain and assisting the patient in that way then rather to accept that they will refuse medical treatment also the refusal of medical treatment is at a point where you can make that decision so if you are at a point where you are not able to make that decision you are not rational anymore that is not something that is available to you. So if you have any other questions about euthanasia, the right to life, um, please you can, can ask any questions, you can speak to us, um, and you can even, as I say, use this number if you want to talk to somebody, um, and yeah, if you want to talk to somebody personally and do not want to leave a comment here. So the next thing we're moving on is the equality clause. So the equality clause in our constitution is section nine um, of the constitution. So equality, the, the basic tenant of the equality clause is that we are all equal before the law and that we have equal right to protection and benefit of the law. So what this means is that when there's legislation national legislation, provincial legis legislation, it must be applicable to everybody. Everybody must have the benefit of being able to use that and the benefit of their protection. And there should be no discrimination on, on certain grounds, which I will speak to you about now. Also, the Equality Clause says that the state should make efforts to look at legislation and correct it where it does have the effect that it actually discriminates on one of the, the grounds. So the grounds um, that that is in the Equality Court, I will take it step by step and maybe use some examples to make it a little more practical for us. Um, the one I think that most people know and has been in the news a lot is that the um, discrimination on the base of race. So this is when somebody is re legislation or uh, when, when, when an activity happens where you are refused access or assistance because of your race, uh, being the only reason why they would, um, you know, why they would refuse assistance. So just to qualify for, for, for viewers who listened on Tuesday, we spoke about, <coughs> sorry, the limitation clause. And in the constitution, there's a general limitation clause. So when you think of, about this discrimination and racial, you maybe have questions about then why do we have things like um, employment equity looking and have looking at appointing people of a specific race. You know, and so that is where the limitation clause comes in. The Employment Equity Act was enacted to correct imbalances that our past history created. And so it, 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 allow, it now allows that you can have something called the Equality Act that is meant to correct those imbalances and that 
would now favor a certain race group or a certain gender group above another group and, and it is allowed because of that limitation clause. So, and it is because the Equality Act is also legislation and an act of general application. So, where there is no such legislation or act of, gen, um, act of general application, meaning a law that says you can do it, then discrimination on the basis of race is not allowed. Um, so, a simple example would be that if you go to a, a guest house or a hotel and they say that you cannot stay there with them if, even though you can pay what they are asking you to pay and the reason they say that is because you are white or black or asian or whatever race um, that is discrimination um, let, let's move on to something like gender so for example if somebody excludes you because you are uh, you identify as a woman and they say that we cannot employ women here because this job is not a woman would not look right in this job or this is, job is not for women and there's no law or legislation that protects that stance then that is discrimination um, something that that is particular to women now is pregnancy so discrimination on the basis that you are pregnant is also um, uh, against is unconstitutional so practically what this would look like is where you you apply for a job and because you are pregnant you don't get the job because of the uh, what the employer might perceive as as um, period periods of apps uh, that you won't be at work you know when you have maternity leave or when you have needs to care uh, or you need to care for your baby then that that is the reasons used not to employ you other examples would be when you are working at, at a specific employer and you, a promotion comes up or there is a, an opportunity for promotion and then you just, a woman that is pregnant, do not get that opportunity because of um, the reason that you are pregnant and then will have obligations after the pregnancy and those are then unconstitutional reasons to use to, dis, to, to, to avoid you. To, to progress in your career. Ex other examples is, um, of, of discrimination, grounds for discrimination is marital status, ethnic social or social origin, color, sexual orientation. So sexual orientation, we've seen a few of those cases and this also relates to, for example, where a guest house in, in the Western Cape refused to allow same-sex couples to stay at their guest house. Um, it went to court and the court found that that was discrimination. Um, discrimination in terms of disability. So meaning that you are not allowed to do a, a specific job because you have a disability, but there's no law that permits that to happen, then that is discrimination. So an employer, just to, 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 um, to, to speak a little bit more about disability, employer should look at means to make it able um, for a person that is impaired in a certain way to be able to do the job. So they would buy things that will make it easier, a specific computer, a specific keyboard, a specific um, software um, uh, for what you need to do. So they need to employ those types of interventions and not just not employ somebody or not let them progress because of their disability. And then something, uh, another ground is religion, conscious belief. Uh, so we've had a case where uh, the, it actually the labor court that looked at this, uh, where people in the workplace were discriminated against because they could not perform duties that on a Saturday because in their religion or belief on a Saturday are not meant to work, and the employer could not show that they have done what they could in order in order to to make sure that whatever needed to be done on the Saturday they can do on any other day or implement any other interventions to still have the productivity that they would get on the Saturday on any other day which the employee was willing to do. So the reason was purely because the employee said that their uh, religion or her religion requires her not to work on a Saturday and 
then she was dismissed. So the court found that that is discrimination based on, on religion, especially since the employer has done nothing, you know, to um, uh, see how they can make the still work in any of the other days in, in a working week. Other, other uh, discrimination, grounds for discrimination is culture, um, religion. Um, uh, sorry, I've mentioned religion, I meant to say language. So language is something that is, is in, in South Africa, I think, something that we can still do a lot about, especially when it comes to legislation and services that is available to people. So it means that just because you don't understand, that, we, that, that, that the state must make all efforts that it can in order to ensure that people are able to access services in a language that they can understand. Sorry, so what it means is that if you are not able to access something, services, benefits, protection of the law, because your uh, mother language is a specific language and whatever you need to access is not available in that language, then it could mean that there is discrimination against you because of language. So those are the grounds for the discrimination that I've mentioned. Um, and, and some of the examples that it happened, some practical example in terms of, of something that could happen every day is that uh, we've had a matter, but this is a, a few more than 10 years ago, but I mentioned this because people might not know that this is also discrimination. Um, a person went to, uh, in fact, the Human Rights Commission received complaints that, they, they, that if people of color, or basically anybody that is not white, goes to a certain salon, hair salon, they were told that they cannot be assisted. Uh, in their investigation, what the Human Rights Commission found that they, in fact, themselves, they sent somebody there. And um, when they went there, they were told that they only, the salon, only assist white people. And in the end, what the court found there is that to, to refuse people on the basis of, of just being white is discrimination. What the salon tried to raise was that the reason they say that is because they didn't have the skills to work on hair, being a hair salon now, hair of people of other ethnic groups. But the court found that that is not enough. In, in our country, you need to make efforts to skill, upskill um, the workers so that they are able to assist anybody um, in, in terms of, of their needs when it comes to hair, for, for a hair salon. And so basically what the court said was, it is not acceptable to say, I don't know how to do this that is specific to a certain ethnic group, and then that being a, a basis for you to say that I can only assist people of X race, actually. So, and it found that there is discrimination and it is not allowed. And in that instance, the salon was asked to apologize to people and also to implement programs where they then upskill their workers and which they agreed to do and have implemented when uh, the investigation was undertaken afterwards to see what was the progress of this. So daily in our lives, you might experience um, discrimination. You might go to a, a, a a place that delivers service, or where um, you need to access certain services of the government, and you know you might not be aware that there is actually discrimination when you are refused something or you cannot access. There's a stumbling block. So when you you encounter such a situation, be sure to call. You know, I'll, I'll call um, legal aid advice line so that you can talk about what has happened and then a, a, a call center agent will be able to tell you whether this actually amounts to discrimination or not. Sometimes we think, uh, as, in, uh, as human beings, sometimes we often want to think we don't want to make a big fuss. We don't want to um, upset uh, things or, yeah, we don't want to make a scene. But, you know, if somebody doesn't do, sometimes if somebody doesn't do something or speak about what has happened to them or what they've encountered, government or the state might not even know there's a problem. And that is the kind of things that actually initiate change. You will see uh, if that 
very often there's cases that go through the constitutional court because of something that happened in last year um you know in the western cape um women they were married in islamic law um, they were discriminated against under certain grounds and in last year the constitutional court found that that is not acceptable um, so every day when things happen that you perceive this this you know when you look at your rights you consider the what we've spoken about in terms of equality when you think that there is something that was not right please speak about it ask our call center agents using this number and and so that we can have the discussion and maybe you can even apply for legal aid at one of our offices if it's a matter that we can take forward if there's merits in in you in the matter that you bring any discrimination that you've experienced that is a matter that will, could qualify for legal aid if you qualify in terms of our other criteria and then we can it can be the start of a process where we can actually contribute and you um, can contribute to changing the law so as mentioned earlier um, we, we spoke about the right to life today uh, a little bit about the right to life so and the right to equality and when you look at the constitution when you look at the constitution it is in chapter two the bill of rights our bill of rights is in chapter two and the right to equality as i've mentioned is section nine i'm not sure if you can see this but it's section nine there and the right to life is section 11 it is plainly said as everyone has the right to life so for example i mentioned um the right to life even goes as far as that in our law we there is no um uh, sentence where a court can say that you must be sentenced to death so the right to life even protect, uh, went as far as protecting that, that we do not have such a sentence as a death sentence in South Africa. Uh, the right to life um, as equality applies to everyone in South Africa. And that is why if you cause the death of somebody, you will be criminally charged. And, and the criminal uh, courts will take the normal, it will take the normal steps in the criminal justice system to determine whether you um, are guilty and, and should be convicted and, and sentenced for that. Uh, so next time we will, as mentioned, we will, in this month we will be talking about various um, rights in the Bill of Rights. We started off with life and equality. Um, in later discussions we will discuss other human rights that we have. So be sure to send us any questions. We'll also field any questions that come up as we've, did, as we've done with Katlejo's question. So please send us questions. And the next time that we are doing this again, we will answer those questions. Um, and we will continue the discussion on human rights. So next week you can join us and we will be discussing the right to the rights of arrested, detained and accused persons. So send us your questions and remember to like and share the video um, and spread the word on human rights. So just to repeat that, we are going to next week talk about the rights of arrested, detained and accused persons. So if you have any questions about that, you can also send that so that the, the next time we speak, we speak and we speak about that topic, we can answer those questions for you already. Um, and just to repeat, you know, our, our toll-free legal aid advice number is 0800-110-110. And if you do not have a landline, so this is toll-free from a landline. If you do not have a landline, you can use our please call me number and somebody will call you back. And the please call me number is 79 Eight three five seven one seven nine, and just just to clarify, it's not only when you have a question on human rights that you can use this number and 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 use the please call me. It's when you have any question about any legal advice, anything that you are struggling with in terms of legal advice, use those numbers. Our call center agents will either get back to you if you send a please call me, or they will answer the call if you call on 
on the toll-free number and be able to assist you. So it is goodbye and until next time, we will hear your questions there. Bye. Oh.